the world is changing. Its shifts have been subtle, imperceptible even. And yet now, as I fly over the Atlantic, something is erupting. Its rumblings have been long felt in Europe, and yet it is in America where it is finding its drama, its crescendo, its face. If I were a sociologist, I might call this phenomenon national populism. And yet, being someone who seeks to understand the world through its people, I am hesitant to begin this documentary by ascribing labels. I am here because I am seeking an understanding, not of what I have read about populism, but through the untold story of what lies before me. I am arriving in America with no fixed route, a shoestring budget, no team and few contacts. And yet, what I am certain of is that I will be touching down at a critical moment in its history. There is an election ahead, but I will be running a different type of campaign. It is one without party affiliation, lobby groups, or the seeking of political power. Rather, it is a campaign to seek the elusive heart of America. And if she be willing to narrate the story she wishes to tell, as an outsider passing through. I have arrived in New York and America is before me. My heart is beating and in being alone as I arrive on this great continent, I think of the thousands of migrants who have touched upon her shores, drawn by the call of a fresh start, the dream of liberty, or in many cases, the promise of freedom from tyranny. The sense of being an outsider will never leave me in America, yet in some ways will help me shaping my understanding of what it is to be truly American, especially as the fear of the other becomes used as an electioneering tactic. Where does one start with the madness of America? How does American politics work? So Shit, on. I don't know. It's conflicting ideas. But I'm saying Bernie, Bernie and Trump are the same person. No, I'm just Two saying old that white popular. men with a different version of tan. It's clashing ideals. Didn't Al Gore in the back right. row? Okay. It's cultural vivacity. Hillary's only going to win because it's bad cop versus worse cop. The kaleidoscopic intelligence of its people. Okay. She told me in ninth grade, if you want to know how anything works in this country, you follow the money. Or the magnetism of its energy. Oh. Within black America, there's a hierarchy. Light skin versus dark skin, long hair, short hair, kinky hair. What does that mean? I realized that I was stepping into a cacophony of ideas, emotions, and history. I decided that rather than trying to order America... And you're gonna give a guy whose tagline is, you're fired, the new code? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that I would acquiesce to its madness, its inspiration, its narrative. My first task was not to try to make sense of her, but to listen. We're not founded on inclusive, we're founded on freedom. The idea that everyone here... Well, the, 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 the idea that everyone here who does what who believes in what we believe in is cool. That's not inclusive, well, that's an agreement. Well, no, immigrant, no, I'm talking about the Im I mean, immigrants throughout, throughout the last 300 years have used the Statue of Liberty as the sign of freedom and, right. and, and, and escape from, right. from religious persecution right. and, and ethnic persecution. There already is a fence, so what's the difference between a fence and a wall, right? Well, but all, I a lot also, of, I think so it's a metaphor, like. It's a metaphor for, all, I mean, it, it, it speaks for a bunch of hate. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and, but there's already a fence up there, right? They see, you know, these mama cedas and like they, you know, they hear all these things about like Hispanics being rapists and the women coming in and just being nothing 
nothing more than cleaners and people to do your back work shit and then they see like 9-11 and they hear about the Chelsea bombings and you know they're gonna blame no ISIS and it's like fuck yeah let's 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 like fuck all these people up and they're on board with it because we're an oil industry town and so for us if the, if the oil industry isn't turning then we're not making money and so there's all these workers but there's no money and I, there, there really is a there just very much is a, a sense of other you know I mean I think that anybody who says that, that racism you know that, that racism is not alive in America in 2016 is, is they're, they're fucking crazy just bottom line I mean like racism is alive and well and it's a problem and it needs to be addressed I don't want my daughter growing up in a world the way it is today I've woken up on a beautiful morning in New York. I have the feeling that I am within life, and the first sense that America is willing to share her story with me. My head is buzzing with conversations of Trump's war, race, immigration, and feminism, and I want to go out into life and be part of the ongoing dialogue of the city. And there's the greedy and the super, super rich that right. come in and use this as a playground yeah. and just spit on it and leave. Right. And these people are so wealthy, but they don't even live here. So that's one reality. And then you have the reality of people who are homeless, who are ill, and there's nobody interested or capable or can afford to help them. So they just drift around here and they're a real nuisance. I know it sound reactionaries and crazy, but, but it's, it's, it's sad. We read about populism as a social phenomenon, and yet what is it really? As I listened to New Yorkers speak of the consequences of exploding house prices, I began to understand the profound impact it has on the different earning brackets of society. Radical wealth disparity seems to be creating anger and jealousy at those looking upwards, and yet simultaneously a frustration and lack of empathy looking downwards. It felt a profound signifier of social decohesion, and I was fascinated to hear how these phenomenons were playing out in the lives of normal people. Many American families across the United States, if they lose their jobs, they're two, three months from being homeless. I mean, I, I can't even contemplate what that means. That means if you lose a job, that two, three months later, if you don't get a substitute job, and you, your car breaks down, you can't fix it, or, or you can't pay your rent, you're homeless. I mean, this is the wealthiest country in the world. An understanding of why people are voting for populists has to gravitate on the reality that the issues are profound and real. Even people who would never vote for a populist seemed as animated by the challenges of immigration, social security and housing as those who would. How can you have a Hitler? How can you have a Mussolini? I mean, how can you have that? Well, with the Trump thing, you get a little insight of how people are so angry that they will vote for a madman. Hitler came in because they were economically on their knees. And I think even though you come to New York City and you see there's a lot of wealth and entertainment and it's fun and people live here and we're not on our knees, but a good part of America, the backbones of America are on their knees. So why that can't happen again? And here we go, we've got Trump. I walk from Central Park, grateful for the honesty of the conversation, but feeling melancholic about the state of things. As if by design, a chance encounter with some young men reframed the narrative. That's fucking beautiful, man. <laughs> what's, this, what's this song called? About my business. This is amazing. The law of attraction is so amazing and so heavily. You know? It's so heavily active and, 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 and present. It's a great, it great performance. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> Spider Man. Like, oh, there he goes. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like, come on, we got a location change. Oh, yeah, location. There was an indescribable energy of serendipity and connection. And within minutes, we decided spontaneously to film a music video. This is one of the most beautiful things about the world, even though there's so much negativity. This is one of the positive things that you see in the community. This is art, this is love right here. I'm out my business, I'm a pro. D R O. 
keep stone, I'm my witness. He all want me to fix this image. And hey, y'all want this. They follow this new rule order. You know, nobody just want to be free, you know? Everybody's uh, locked up in a box. The way the world is going right now, I mean, in this country, it's, it's getting real bad out here, but through all the negativity you see to find, like this man right here, my man. How you doing? What's up, man? See a musician right here. Love is love. Let's see Disciple. Some things that I can change to make me a better man. My yesterday is gone. Today I'm a new me Some hills I had to climb Some lessons slow time Now I'm a better man Today, today I'm a new me What's up, man? Man, 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 right here. Yeah, I like that. I love having this, brother. I got up and danced with you. I hope that you would get up and dance with my son when he danced. Like, what? I'm going to be scared of you because you're different color than me? It, what does that mean? Well, people just, they did, we, did, we degrade each other, you get what I'm saying? We because say, we touch, we feel, say everything. With lack of knowledge, you do irrational things. Yeah. With knowledge, you know better, so you do better. No, I'm just saying, we're all the same. People are scared of that, I don't know why. Everybody's got to stop the hate. And we all got to come together. And you know what, until that happens, we're in trouble. I'm very worried. If we're gonna have a reality show star be, a, be running for president, we should have a, at least a good one. And if Donald Trump gets in this presidency, we're in trouble. I don't know why, but as human beings, we so often forget the gifts we have and the blessings of each day. For the first time, my investigation into populism had penetrated the realm of intellect and issues. And in a chance meeting, the illusory boundaries we hold up as human beings were being dismantled. New York was revealing something too often kept in darkness, the human heart. He against the blacks, the whites, the gays. He's against everybody, the Jews. What, are you, I mean, what, what is wrong with this country? I mean, the Muslims. What the, I mean, I love the Muslims. What's wrong with the Muslims? That's what makes, that's what makes us the United States of America. <laughs> I'm all the way from the other side of Brooklyn, just. We feed most of the community. In the world! There is a presumption that populism is a manifestation of a rage felt by normal people outside the political, economic, and media elites. Chicken is always good, drink chicken, man. Peas and rice, and the white rice with the, you know, cattle at the side. Oh, the drink chicken! Uh, the challenge of having a business in America. That is hard. Harder, harder. It's a hard thing to do. I wanted to gauge the temperature of small businesses nice people working here. Yeah, 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 yeah. and get a sense of what hard-working people were feeling in the build-up to the election. Dalton, I feel like I'm in a celebrity area now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give it a try. It's excellent. <laughs> Not wrong. I'm a blessed one, all right? It's the sauce. The sauce, the chicken is tender, nice, and juicy. Because you yeah, have so much, so much tax you have to pay. It's not an easy thing to do. The economy is really tough, right? Now. All right, sweetie, we good. <laughs> Where do your customers come from? Like Guyana, Trinidad, Barbados, England, New Zealand, Australia, Mexico. All over the world, Ephra. And you have a lot of crazy people just like Donald Trump. So, anything can happen. Ah, mm. ah We are the creation of the American dream. We want people to dream about coming to America, thinking that they're going to have freedom and opportunity like everything's thrown at them. But in reality, like you said, you have to work for it. As an ethnic, every race has an individual that has a dream. It's just fortunate that America is where you can seek it. You get the opportunity to do whatever you want. The American dream is, is the opportunity for people to be here and make themselves and make themselves profitable in this in this country. Whatever car you want, you can go wherever you want, go wherever place you want. Restaurants to say, hey, come eat here. Like I'm not gonna clean the dishes because I was born here. You know, I was born in this house, you know what I'm trying to say? They got hoods in Germany, they got dudes tatted up, smoking weed. 
and they're white. You know what I'm trying to say? Why does every president have to keep being 70, 80 years old? That's crazy. You know what I'm trying to say? Somebody he's like, like Michael Phelps. Like Michael Phelps, he's he's a he's a modern day white person. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. Once they make it for this era, then it'll be the constitution of 2016, not 17, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, horses are never be replaced by cars. Are you crazy? You know what I'm trying to say? Are you and then there's one sheep going, nah, yo, don't do it, yo. Like, don't listen to him, yo. They, they, the shepherd looks back and go, oh, let me shoot that sheep real quick, yo. He about to fuck up my whole fucking plan, man. He fucking shit up. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm gonna make you the president. You know what I'm trying to say? We're not listening to y'all no more. Y'all are fucking up America. Y'all fucking, fucking up the economy. Y'all fucking up mad shit. And there's new ideas out here. It's 2016. Battle is psychological. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't. I didn't believe somebody took a, a rocket ship up there. I, I don't believe the Earth is some brown ass ball. You know what I'm trying to say? So no one knows really where this shit came from. You know what I'm trying to say? You don't know this is Earth. This shit, man. You don't know what this is. You don't know. You never know. I'm a yo. I'm gonna tell you something. I don't you don't know the real name of this place. You don't know how the continents look. You've never been a million miles in the air. You, you, you think Florida, you don't know which way Florida is. You made the word plain. I don't, no, 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 no. That's yo, yo. I never did figure out exactly what James was trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. But somehow his kaleidoscopic mishmash of similes, metaphors, allegories, and analogies reflected the vastness of the American experience and the challenge before me of attempting to understand it. That's real. All right, yo, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'd been eagerly absorbing the colors and musings of the New York street. Hillary's got more experience and, 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 and she's just a better candidate. Uh, Trump is not ready for it. Simple. Tonight, however, the election cycle would truly kick off. I'm in Harlem and have managed to wing a ticket into the world-famous Apollo Theater. But this is a man who has called women pigs, slobs, and dogs. Well, I don't feel as if it's show business. I think it's pretty serious, and I'm very nervous about it. I also have a much better temperament than she has. Nature says, act now or else. Donald thinks that climate change is a hoax perpetrated by the Chinese. I think it's real. <laughs> Hillary mentioned that she's going to make fighting global warming a priority. Donald was one of the people who rooted for the housing crisis. He said back in 2006, gee, I, I hope it does collapse because then I can go in and buy some and make some money. Well, it did collapse. That's called nine, business, by the way. Nine million people. You know what Trump is? He's like, um, what do they call that? You know, when the end comes, you know, rapture and all that, tribulation. He's like, you know, Satan, Satan incarnate. incarnate. I'll be reducing taxes tremendously. You haven't paid any federal income tax. That's going to be a job creator like we haven't seen since Ronald Reagan. It's going to be a beautiful thing to watch. It's, it's really unfortunate that he paints such a dire negative picture of black communities in our country. African-American communities are being decimated you're, by crime. You're too much What do you make? What do you make? You, make you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> African-Americans, Hispanics, are living in hell because it's so dangerous. You walk down the street, you get shot. So I think you were able to stand tall. great again. We are a nation that is seriously troubled. We're losing our jobs. People are pouring in to our country. The other day we were deporting 800 people. It was beautiful. Watching the debate we were witnessing a clash of archetypes. As an alpha male disruptor clashed with a schooled female establishment figure. Again, race and immigration came to the forefront. Trump's use of fear and dramatization as an electioneering tactic contrasted sharply with Clinton's reasoned and studied inclusivity. 
America was being presented with the starkest of choices. And again, I turned to the genius of the streets to summarize the crossroads at which she had arrived. Hey, Jim, what's going on? I'll see you in about 10 minutes, all right, bud? No, <laughs> that makes it, just keep going. Ooh, that makes it official. Don had lived the anyway. most colorful of lives. From experiencing war in the US military. The Berlin Wall did not fall because they used bad concrete. The Berlin Wall fell because of my team. <laughs> to being a barber to the stars. It is an estate, it is capital, it is life. I use this to cut through the bullshit. I use this to cut rid of the past of yesterday. Sensing my confusion about the state of America, he took me under his wing and, in introducing me to the inner life of Harlem, allowed me to experience it not as an outsider, but from within its very heart. It brings my intelligence down a notch to answer Trump, Donald Trump's, you know, <laughs> semantics. A central takeaway from the debate was not about the issues themselves, but about the voices the candidates were bringing to them. You want to know the state of America? From my perspective, it's very volatile right now. How do you feel about New York switching up, flipping up the way it has? Because I feel a little way. They uprooted. You know why? Because we don't stick together. That's just straight how it is. We too busy like crabs in a barrel trying to pull you down because you make a dollar. Trump was using fear as a tactic to divide people and to make different groups afraid of one another. I was curious if this fear was something populism was inserting into society or if I could see evidence of its nascence on the streets themselves. We tend to protect the Donald Trumps for some strange reason. I ain't making it, so I'm hating. You know, disliking you, I ain't gonna talk street. Like, disliking you because you making something of yourself and I'm too busy being negative trying to how you say kick, kick you down with me instead of being united and we could come up together. But a lot of people don't think like that. How is he even closely in the runnings for the highest political position of the world? This is the state of mind of the world right now. We're not looking for a good, pious leader. We're looking for the best cheater. Yes. Who are you voting for? Who are you voting for? You're a very cute Harlem dog, aren't you? I'd been lucky enough to feel the embrace of the African American community in New York. Ahead of me now lay Ohio, where an old Italian American friend, Terry Rongali, had invited me to stay in his basement and where I hope to find the next piece in the jigsaw of America. This is what we do in Northeast Ohio. Hold that tiger! Look at it! It's classic Northeast Ohio clam base. Come on, Jim, you're our guest. We got some chicken on the grill. Look at those beautiful people there cheering. My cart, I drive around the neighborhood in the cart. <laughs> we, we don't know him. <laughs> Rules of American football. Come on, bring the hammer to break the rock, motherfuckers. Hit them as hard as you can. Go get them, Tigers! As legal as you can. Cheaters. Put the football in the end zone. There we go, catch it, go! <laughs> but it's all about how hard you hit them. Hold oh, that Tiger! Come on, come on. <laughs> Shit, because we're lost. Oh, oh my god. Hell, it's a nice safety belt today. Yeah. It's like a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling safe. Back to my house, get a bottle of liquor. Watch out for the car! I see the freaking car, <laughs> And this place is really interesting. It's like the Truman Show. What do you for you? That's for you. You don't want That's the tequila? Right, I'm with you. All right. <laughs> Oh, I really am a Trump supporter only because I want change, but I feel like in the end, Hillary's gonna win. I'll tell you what, freaking Hillary is an entitled politician who's done nothing. Trump is an entrepreneur who's actually been a businessman. been welcomed into the rituals, culture, and hospitality of Ohio, 
by Terry's family and friends. I was fascinated how Ohio's famous swing state status was reflected evenly in this intimate friendship group. Whereas Obama had won handsomely twice in Ohio, the polls in early October were neck and neck between Trump and Clinton. I wanted to dive deeper into the heart and mind of Ohio and ask Terry if he would drive me to Cleveland. Walmart is the largest employer in Ohio and it's also the largest employer in the nation. When I was a kid growing up, the largest employers was the steel industry and the um, uh, auto industry. Everyone had good raises, good benefits, health care, and we don't have that anymore. As Terry told me about the changing face of Ohio, I wondered about the social impact of these disappearing industries on normal people. I felt that to understand the human effect, I needed to witness the reality of the loss of manufacturing firsthand. Hey bro, I'm, my name's Jim. What's your name? I'm stuck. It turned out that my guide would once again appear in the most unlikely of places. It's the new Gilded Age. None of these people have to pay tax. Only, only the working people are taxed to like a quarter, a quarter of their income. And we don't get much in return because the infrastructure's falling apart, the school system's falling apart, the health care is a joke. The only thing that keeps this together is that people are so mollified by, by, by Walmart and the Kardashians that they don't revolt. As long as, they get, long as they can keep 500 t TV channels going, everybody will just sit there, uh, you know, transfixed. I'm finna deconstruct some pizza, son! <laughs> I hit it off with the brilliantly named Stutz Beer Cats, and that evening we bonded over beer, Buddhism, and music. Buddhism demands that you become who you are. That's the demand of Buddhism. As you practice every day, you become what it is that you are. And what it is I need, I'm right now, I'm a guy that needs a sip of beer. So Knowing I was hungry for insight into the state of America, the next days, he introduced me to some of the impacts of the waning of the steel manufacturing and automobile industries in the Rust Belt. Here, there's always trillions and trillions of dollars to go to war, to bomb some unfortunate people that happen to be walking around on high-grade crude. There's always money for that. There's never money to, for, the, for the infrastructure, and it, it's, the city is collapsing. And this is, what, this is what we wind up with, you know, the... You know, the, the skeletons, you know, that we have to walk over of uh, well, you know, the skeletons that the capitalist system leaves behind. Okay, this is the old Richmond Brothers uh, tailoring company. It was uh, from probably 1920 to 1970, maybe even earlier. But this is, it goes for blocks and blocks, and there's just thousands and thousands of men that worked here, and they fed their families working in this place. And now all these jobs are in China, the people are chained to some fucking desk where they have nets outside the window so they don't jump out and kill themselves and all these jobs are in china with people making what 30 cents an hour 20 cents an hour now are you for are you taiwanese me yeah. yeah no where chinese From, you're kidding you're like he's lying <laughs> you're lying he's lying <laughs> no. No? You, you didn't really buy this building yeah my building i don't know english what will you do with it I, 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 I don't, you have called my son. How much money? I don't know. He wants he wants to buy from you. Yeah. He buys from you. Yeah. I yeah. Oh, okay. I got four dollars. You going in? Yeah. Really? No, let's go. All right, you're the boss. Whatever you want to do. You know, this has been vacant for 50 years. Whoa. What will you do here? Knock down? Push. Knock no. down? No. No? Businesses? In Chinese business, American business, both. American, American. I'm trying to imagine that how many people, like, you can just picture the racks of clothes and all the machines, just, you know, hundreds of sewing machines, hundreds of people working, th you know, three shifts. They went all day. This place closed hell when I was 16 or 17. As a matter of fact, I remember the jingle. Richmond Brothers for your clothes. That was their, j I remember that jingle. Why? Wow. I got this at the. I bought this at the Goodwill. I got this at Goodwill in Los Feliz. China stole all our jobs, so it's good to see some Chinese people coming here to bring some jobs back. High five. He didn't come up playing guitar, doing drugs, and drinking every night. See the bodyguard? Big boss. Yeah. Ah. 
Big Boss. Yeah, Big Boss. We'll see you later, you guys. Okay. And that was the Richmond Factory. Yes, wow. I felt lifted by this brilliant interaction by an American raconteur and a Chinese entrepreneur. The Richmond building was closed by its American owners Woolworth in the early 1990s. Even if the boom and bust capitalism Stutz described was responsible for its closure, spaces like this were being easily appropriated by Trump as dire consequences of a globalized world. Once again, I was confronted by a paradox. It was, after all, the Chinese who were at last planning to resurrect this great icon of American manufacturing. Change. We need to change. The country's yeah. getting worse every single... Oh, this is too close. Years ago, everybody was able... You, you didn't have to be a genius to get a job. You could just go out and get a job working in a factory. Maybe Mr. Obama is part of the Muslim faith. He still and he's still believes that. bringing American down with it. And yet, you know, Hillary, no matter what she does, I think it's feminist. I think it's it's a problem with men have with women, and they can't. They they're attacking her on grounds that they would never attack attack a white male on. It was nearly time to leave Cleveland, and my mind felt more frazzled than ever. I decided the only thing to do was to ask a man who had sold over two million hot dogs to help make sense of things. Old-fashioned hot dog. This is a landmark place in Cleveland, Ohio. We've been going 87 years. I can't help but think of Trump, so I feel like <laughs> right now that's the way I'm leaning. Well, I take voting serious. I'm, I'm leaning towards Trump right now. He's a guy that tells the truth. He's a real joke. 2.1 million. 2.1 million. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Yeah. Who are you voting for? Trump. Because he's a businessman. So why is he going to help America? Because he's going to make us rich. Sports and politics, that's all people talk about. No politics. No politician, no fake, you know. He acts like a guy you can sit down and have a beer with in a bar. But as I said, I didn't say I was going to vote for the guy. Because he appeals to you guys. Yeah, he... I ain't saying he... Yeah, he does appeal to me. You, appeal, you, you like, like that bombastic um, uh, macho talk of his, but it's talk. What? 40 dogs. 40? Are you crazy? 40? A he couple does. hundred a day. Really? 200? Yeah. For you? For me alone? Yeah. She served in the White House. On paper, she's she's one of the most qualified people we've had in, in yeah. a long time. No. I don't know. Like I said, I really don't know who I'm going to vote for. There's times I'm saying I'm not even going to vote. Imagine if you lined up all those hot dogs, one after the other, we could go. They'd probably go to the moon and back. <laughs> <laughs> we can figure that out. Look who, look who supports him. Putin likes him. David Duke, head of the Ku Klux Klan, likes him. Why do these people, our enemies, like him? You know, David Duke's our enemy? David Duke, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a neo-Nazi. I know who he is. is. I know exactly He's who absolutely is. our enemy. You know? know we went to war against the Nazis. You realize that? I understand okay. that. Yeah. Hey, in America, you're allowed to disagree with people, man. You're, yeah, I mean, the first thing you do is, hey, you know, agree to disagree. Good right? hot dogs, mate. Yeah. Right? Good hot dogs. That's mate. what that's what Americans yeah. are being are all CP. about. Agreeing to disagree. Well, who am I voting for? I haven't really made my mind up yet. Hands up, hit the ground, face down, they're coming for you. Comply, no attitude, face black and blue, death is coming for you. Death is coming for you. Death is coming for you. Riding in the white and blue. I am arriving in Charlotte in North Carolina in the aftermath of the killing of Keith Lamont Scott. The subsequent demonstrations turn violent as the anger at shooting bias by police towards black people boiled over. The Charlotte I discover is, however, rather in grief. For the first time, talk of the election is muted, and yet the topic of race is thrust front and center into the national debate. Oh, I would just say that we haven't made much progress from, you know, the early 1900s because it's still, it seems like, it, like the value of black lives does not matter to the majority of society here in America. The police 
may genuinely be afraid, but that the, what makes that racist is that the fear is ingrained in them. And you know they give you this, they cast this this dream about everyone's equal, but you know when it comes down to it, it goes by what you show and not what you say. Society tells them to be afraid of the black man. How do we not see it coming? Or is this something we're not getting? Society has made the black man out to be something to be feared. Like me personally, I feel like we failed. I feel like society has repeated itself over and over and over because all we do is nationalize and block our expansion into the cosmos. Which is why it's so easy for them to go out and execute. The system has been designed, fear the black man, kill the black man, exterminate the black man, put the black man in, in prison. It is those people that are angry. And, and when I say they're angry, it's that majority of the white population that are angry that things aren't better for them. So um, how do they express that anger? And some of them go back to those old ways, if you will. Each conversation I had in Charlotte seemed to reflect an experience or perception of ongoing systemic racism. It made me think of the civil rights movement, not in historical terms, but as an ongoing struggle. It felt tragic that systemic racism had to be thrust to the fore by Keith Lamont Scott's death, rather than as a creative discussion about American identity and its need to reconcile itself with its history of slavery, lynchings, and the murder of civil rights activists. In Barack Obama, the first black president arrived as the great unifier. Yet in such a polarized environment, I wondered, what could the effect of Trump be? The great divider. So I've just been researching about, about some basics about hurricane condition. <laughs> Well, how you getting there? Well, I'm renting a car. Okay. Unless you want to drive me. <laughs> Anthony, hey, it's Jimmy. How you doing? I would love to, Jim, but I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to be dodging stuff flying through the air. I mean, I don't want to get caught up in no no, no tornado or hurricane. Hell yeah, I feel like a good whiskey, too. <laughs> you know, them or something, Mother Nature ain't nothing to play with. Saturday, you and I both be out of here. <laughs> Devil's hell else do you need when you're preparing for a hurricane? You're so fast. Superman onesie or bear onesie? And you go. I am your father. Result. Mm. I feel like this, this election has lost sight of the people and of how special it is to be alive and some type of basis in our humanity and when our politics isn't serving our humanity then it's lost the plot and I feel like that's something that, that, that needs to be addressed globally in our politics. 120 mile an hour winds will tear a house down. The okay. storm is uh, here. Is a tornado warning has been issued for our area. Oh, yeah, so we were right here in the North Carolina Bay. At what point with the strength of winds would you start having worries structurally about the house? A hundred mile an hour. And it's Plus. 105 at the moment? Yes, when it starts hitting a hundred mile an hour, mm -hmm. our asses are out of here. Right. I see anything larger than a chicken flying by, we're getting the hell out of here. <laughs> Trees break, stuff flying through there, that'd kill you, it hit you. Mm -hmm. Here's your beer. It's like you've been on a motorcycle and hitting a tree at 100 mile an hour, you're gonna die. <laughs> it is what it is. With the election storm in full swing, it felt somehow fitting to await Hurricane Matthew with Anthony's indomitable spirit and charismatic hospitality. A few days earlier, Hillary Clinton had named Trump supporters a basket of deplorables. It reflected a trend in the media to confuse the antagonism of Trump's rhetoric with the very real issues many Americans were facing. My grandfather worked in the mines. Uh, my brothers, my uncles, we made a living. We had our family. We raised our children here. You know, that's how we did it. And all of a sudden, the government comes in there and says, we're going to put so many regulations. Hillary Clinton got on national TV and so did Obama. If you're in the coal business, you better be looking for another job. All those thousands and thousands of people out of work. And I mean, there, there are no other jobs. We need to take care of Brian take care of this country, get our backbone back, our infrastructure back, our jobs back. You know, people with pride, 
You know, people used to have pride when they went to work. We manufactured, we made things, we worked together in the United States to achieve things. And now, we don't manufacture anything. We awoke the next day to the news that the eye of the hurricane had changed course and would make landfall at Myrtle Beach, less than five miles away. So the actual eye is coming here. The main surge in the eye of the storm is going to be here about 1.30 today. Yeah, eight miles from here, a tornado uh, set down and tore up houses and property. Anthony was noticeably more nervous than the previous day. And yet, in the spirit of true American adventurism, insisted we head to Myrtle Beach to see for ourselves. Okay, so where are we going to go? Down towards North Myrtle Beach. You ready for this? I just don't know. The gas stations are closed. But ready? you know what? The liquor store is open. <laughs> the liquor. <laughs> Everything east to Oceanside of Highway 17 is mandatory evacuated because of the flooding. Okay. And then when the surge comes in, the ocean is going to push all that water, which they already have flooding down there yeah. now. Shit, look at the rain. Wow. Gunning it down when this fucking hurricane hits land. I can't believe it's hitting here. This is where the water comes in off the ocean into the channel. Not a soul on the streets. Wow. So the ocean is straight in front of us. Okay. Whoa, man, they're going to come down. So we're at the ocean now. Fuck me. That's the ocean beginning to come in. An hour or two, yeah? That's scary shit, and I'm not staying here for long, I tell you that much. That's exactly where it's coming in. My surge can come in at any time, yeah? Yeah, yeah. They say it's supposed to happen any time after two. Wow, yeah, there. it's coming through. Wow, look at that. Yeah, we probably need to get out of here. I think we should yeah. get out. Let's do it. I think I think one big surge could come in at any time now. Oh my god. It's coming in with fury now. I mean come it on. Is. Jesus, look at this, it's coming in. Let's See the it. ocean, we're running. Right now, we're running parallel. Look. That was oh, where wow, the tornado yeah. hit earlier, blew the roof clean off. Man. This whole area is prone to flooding. Now that the water is breaching the dunes off of the beach, this whole area, is, it will flood. Let's not get trapped. Look how the road's flooded. Okay, wow, this is our last chance to get out of here. It's oh, literally... Shit. I can't get through there. Oh my God. Flooded. But you've got an exit route, do you? Yeah, that was scary, just seeing the road close like that, thinking, wow, can we not get out of here? Do we need to get to higher ground? But, you know, sometimes I ask myself in life, why do I have to be with the one guy who wants to be out in all of, all of South Carolina when the fucking eye of the storm's hitting? You just gotta grow a set of nuts and go with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's one of life's adventures. It's very tough getting around with hundreds of area roads closed. It's another road blocked up there. No way to get through or down the 905, huh? Whoa! Whoa. Rolling on the river! Oh, shit. As if by design, two epochal events struck both Clinton and Trump's campaigns as Hurricane Matthew hit. Oh, this is not feeling good at all. Properly going through a lake. On the one hand, the access to Hollywood tapes revealed Trump's bragging about his sexual exploits and predatory approach towards women. On the other, WikiLeaks began publishing thousands of emails from Clinton's campaign. The aftermath reflected not just the perilous state of both candidacies. The wind. You could hear trees snap. But signified we were now within the heart of a truly unprecedented presidential cycle. It's terrifying. Neither campaign would ride out the aftermath with the dignity of the people they were set to govern. I just thank God that that's all that was lost, because it could have been a whole lot worse. Kind of get the yard straight <laughs> in the process. So that's Dad up there. Yeah. How you doing, Dad? Are you all right? <laughs> Did you get out of the beach okay? Yeah, I was all right. That, that's Good. a dad doing a proper dad's that's work. A, that's a true homeowner for you. Yeah. <laughs> it is hard to describe how the feeling changes as one drives south. You notice it in the landscape, hear it in the accents, but more so 
in the caress of the air around you. There is an ease of being as it envelops you, as if you can breathe in a new way. There is a sense of inversion when in the South, as if, in slowing, you can hear America's plurality of voices with greater clarity, and with it, a recognition that to truly understand America, each one must be heard, absorbed, interjected. I wanna live in a blue sky. I wanna live in a blue sky. I wanna live in a blue sky. I wanna live in a blue So if I may. People keep asking me, have we, have I ever seen anything like this? And I keep saying no. And I just hope to God I don't see another campaign like this one. America can do better than what we have seen here tonight. This was just disgraceful. Most people feel like, you know, the rich stay rich, the poor stay poor. Misery. The middle class work to keep from being poor. You can't have me no more. But to make the rich richer, people feel forgotten about. I ain't got time. We throw away more food on a daily basis Give that could actually money. probably feed the whole world. I feel like a lot of American politics all depends on who you know and what kind of money you have. The thing is, we're fucking choosing between two fucking morons. It's so cool to have the first female president. Absolutely. However, I find it really pathetic that Hillary Clinton can barely beat Trump. Half of us work our asses off just to make ends meet. That American dream is something that you saw in the 50s. Yes. And you can't tell me shit's not rigged. Something's coming. Change is coming, whether it's going to be good or bad. But change is coming. I know the people like us who work our asses off are tired of the people like who run our, our country. I mean, New Orleans is in a constant state of decay. It's the lowest place in, in America, and uh, it, it, but it's a beautiful type of decay. It's a, it's a fascinating type, type of decay because the leaves that are turning yellow, there's always something bright green coming right up with it. I mean, the, uh, Louisiana is teeming with life, and it really has a, a longing for life. And it's, it's everywhere, and it's beautiful. <laughs> You know, everybody has to watch what you say to be politically correct. This just started, what, the last two years? It's like, oh my God, like the statues. You know, the statues have been in New Orleans for, I don't even know how many years. What I discovered in the South was not a sense of wanting to ignore or forget history, but a feeling that it had come to terms with its own past. But, but, they, but they want to tear down a statue, though. They, they couldn't, it was hard to find a racist here in New Orleans. They try to start all that stuff, but we're all been married to each other and stuff. We're all, we don't have colors here, we don't have shades. We, uh, my, New Orleans has been mixed for so many years. Oh my God. We, we, they try to start all that racial stuff. That stuff doesn't work with us. It never has, never will, you know. <laughs> it seemed that the South felt itself appropriated by these so-called cultural wars embodied by the removal of Confederate statues. How many years, and now all of a sudden they're racist or somebody's being offended by a statue? Give me a freaking break. The politicization of culture was dredging up old divisions and racial tensions, which the South felt it was organically moving on from. As a nation, I think it's coming together. It's still gonna take some time, but everything does, you know? And I believe in that. We all gonna survive. And I'm tired of America's self-hatred. I can prove to you very quickly that we're not a racist country. We elected a black president twice. A, a black comprised a little less than 13% of the population. New forms of music are not born in fancy neighborhoods or with people that get a lot of funding from the uh, government. They're born on the streets and the sidewalks, a little messy sometimes. You know, they're born in places like this. 
We're the wealthiest nation in the world. And we're below like the highest ranks, like out of the top 10 of how many categories? I think that this neighborhood is gonna become a, 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 just another wealthy neighborhood. A museum. What's destroying the country? Only 10% of the people vote. You're willing to kill and die for the right to vote and you won't do it? And you're talking about a revolution? Probably using the revolution you got. I think that this is going to be the debate where Trump is going to go all out. He's going to lash out. He's going to say whatever he feels like. He's going to grab the debate by the pussy. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Well, we have some bad umbrellas here, and we're gonna get them out. No one's hating any, anywhere right here. Like, no one has any anger or hate toward them. We're just good people all having a good time. She wants to open borders. People are gonna pour into our country. I'm not gonna let someone project on me what, what my country is. When I'm sitting here having a beer, you know, having the best time of my life. You don't have to do the job. It's hard to believe that the race is actually so close when you get to watch the debate and see what he has to say that is actually, a lot of it is nonsense. I want it. That's why I got it on my back in the beginning. It's because I give a shit about the people around me. People matter. And you know, building a wall is bullshit. I literally, like when you asked me for a sip of my beer, I literally got emotional because like, bro, like we just met, you know, like I'm a given heart. Like that's, that's who I am. Like we just met, you know, and, like you feel comfortable enough with me, you know, no hate, nothing like, you know, 60 years, you know, 60, 50 years ago, that shit would have never happened. I would have had to take a drink in a fountain, you know, back outside or some shit like that, you know, so that that's how far we come. And that's, that's things like this. That's what makes this country great, man. America was continuing to reveal its different faces to me. Texas had voted Republican in every election since 1980. And yet, despite the polarity in the debate, it showed me a version of an America at peace with itself. Republican and Democrat sat side by side, and for a brief moment I felt a healthy, conversational and interactive approach to politics. Ahead of me, however, lay Austin, where the reality of the economic divides would present themselves in stark colors. And if there is one thing a populist leader understands, it is how to exacerbate existing tensions and use them for political gain. Sometimes just strangers fighting one another over something that they may stepped on each other's foot in the club while they getting drunk or something. You know, something that don't make any sense. Or this lady decides that she want to go over here with this gentleman and that gentleman didn't think she should. It's, they, they, they never really fighting over anything that matters. What matters, Lisa? What matters is life and preserving it and learning and teaching one another how to survive with each other. We, we don't know how to do that, you know? And racism, that needs to be dead and gone. Those that started it is dead and gone. Let, let it die with them, you know what I'm saying? We are a whole new generation and we got new generations to come. What are we teaching them? How to stay in the past? It was in my meeting with Linda that I realized my grappling with America had somehow begun in the wrong place. Linda's words, what matters is life and preserving it, struck at my core. Like most, I've been pulled into the drama, the divisions, the conflicting ideas and the spectacle. Sitting by her side and within her gentleness and kindness, I was introduced to a new perspective of America. That night, I watched from my van as two old friends shared a joint and prepared for another night on the streets. I felt a sense of humility before the grace with which they seemed to bear their lot in life. And I felt a sense of shame that for all my wrestling with America, 
that I had not had the courage to reach his heart. I vowed that I would play a new hand at the game. From this point, I wanted to tell the story of the untold election. Oh, it's a rush. It's a big rush. The wildest woman you ever had in your life. I mean, crazy. It's, it's not, are you going to get hurt? It's, it's when. Broken ribs. I broke my femur like six times. Got more screws right there. I broke it coming off a bull. Come on. I got slammed down face first in the dirt. I've got screws right here. Every muscle in my body aches. Got surgery on my eye. I just do this because I love it. They moved him to 70s. Broke my shoulder. Cowboys in trouble. Oh, Being well on the ball, like being on top of the world. Right here across this one. I was enjoying my first rodeo. It seemed on the surface a quintessential expression of American energy, brawn and gumption. Yet, in attempting to peel away the layers of this seemingly most south of traditions, I found my own impressions once again subverted. The rodeo is wonderfully multicultural in both its origin and its expression in modern culture. It articulates a conservatism way beyond the baiting and villainization in populist rhetoric. It's not just, it's not an American sport. I mean, it is, the, the original vaqueros in Mexico, they got rodeo started, and I mean, everybody just went from there. It's Brazil, Cuba, uh, Mexico, America. It is a international sport. It is a conservatism of family values, love of nature, Values that are in no way at odds with liberal sentiment about the environment and looking after one another. Is this, is this one of your lot? It's my son. <laughs> We're thankful that we spend a lot of time doing it and exercising, running, and being the best that we can be. So we're blessed because of that. Cowboy life, country life, hunting, fishing, riding, everything. <laughs> when you go beyond the politics, you find these things are just an expression of one another. In the rodeo, I found an America overcoming itself. It pointed to the artificiality and the divides of the right and the left, and the illusion of how our politics characterizes us, as if from two separate species. I feel about America now is that we need to put all the racial differences aside, all the business aspects aside, and get back to being a faith-driven country. And we need to we need to go back to understanding that and become a country as one, you know, through faith. It, it doesn't matter what religion you are. We just need to come together as we're all cut from the same cloth and just, you know, we need to put our differences aside and, and work together. And, and that's the bottom line. Uh, never giving up. Uh, never letting an injury back you down. Uh, there's a number of things. It, it, it's more of in your heart. It's not how you look, how you talk, how you dress. It's, it's more of all in your heart. Yeah. Well, where it is at the moment, it's in a hell of a shape. You know, there needs to be something done about it. So, for one thing, they need to vote for Trump and give him a shot. And since he's a businessman, then maybe he can get a bunch of stuff done if he didn't get up there and get corrupted like the rest of them. You gotta get, the, you gotta get this country turned around and you can't, you can't keep going into debt because if they do, they're gonna fold the money system as we know it today. <laughs> We're 20 trillion dollars in debt and all of this has been since Reagan went in office. Well, my sign out front says it all. No matter who wins this election, we're gonna lose here. And the way the election's going, uh, they're not talking about us. And, you know, Trump is. Trump is talking about the little man. Small businesses all over America are the same way. But the Democrats aren't talking about the little man. They're taxing us out of existence. I would always like to believe that everybody's going to be better in the end. You know, but it's going to take an awful lot of us working really hard to do that. And, you know, and that's what we're lacking in America now. People working really hard at something. I think they want it too easily. 
they think that somehow it's gonna, the government's going to promise them they don't have to do anything for that. It's like an effortless thing, and all of a sudden we're just everybody's happy. You know that that is not reality. You know, not reality at all. American and the Mexican border is right there. El Paso used to be Mexico. Part, mo a lot of California used to be Mexico. Majority of people are supporting him. Of Anglo-Saxon people who over the last 40 years have seen that erosion of white supremacy. You know, what's going to happen if he does win and, and if that wall is built? You know, these people, a lot of these people are already in, you know, they're barely making it now as it is. And they don't like what's happening. They don't like it. They feel like, they feel like they're being minority now. They're not the majority like they used to be at one time. To the minority now, and they don't like it. They don't like it. Okay, this is the good place if you want to start in life all over again. There it is, you know. But you have to want it. You have to actually say to yourself, "I don't want to be here," you know, because this is the bottom of the barrel almost. I'm going to prove the old people they can do a lot of things. For me, it was almost a greater power was directing me. And, and to go through that, I had to go through hell in order to learn what I was being trained for. I don't know if that makes any sense to you at all, but that's, that's what I live and that's what I believe. I would never have ended up taking care of homeless people if I didn't, it didn't, wasn't immersed in it myself. My experiences in Austin had shown me that there is no true understanding of America without confronting the epidemic of homelessness. If, as Gandhi mused, a nation's health can be judged by how well it treats its weakest member, then how does one grapple with this epidemic in the world's richest country? Perhaps we are all complicit in some way. We demonize the homeless, make them outcasts, deprive them of their humanity, and settle our consciences with a few dollars chucked into a hat once a month. In the Opportunity Center in El Paso, I came across what can only be described as twin forms of heroism, both in the work of those choosing to wrestle with the plight of those most in need, but even more so, the power of spirit of those trying to claw themselves out from destitution itself. I like your accent. Don't say where you're from, I'm gonna guess, Australia. Close-ish. <laughs> Actually, it was Scotland. Scotland. I didn't think of that. I'm going to Scotland. All right, I'm going to do it. Well, I'm what? I'm kicking. I'm kicking. Yeah. I'm kicking here. I'm kicking shit. <laughs> what the damn? We'll be in trouble. What are you making here? The groceries. Okay. Wow, you make it so quickly, Riso. <laughs> Wow, beautiful work, my friend. Thank you so much. For you. Oh no. Present for you. Yes, sir. Uh, oh wow. Does it get to? Oh my God, I will wear it with so much pride. <laughs> what struck me in the Opportunity Center was the thin red line between the circumstances of one life and the next. In America, it feels the safety net between falling through the social order is far thinner than in Europe. And I was aghast at how a missed bill, a freak injury, a lost job, or an unexpected illness could prove so fundamentally life-changing. Being 54 years old with, with no insurance and a uh, uh, pretty serious medical condition, it's, it's very scary and, and depressing. And I had an illness where I ended up in the hospital and my hospital stay ate all of the money that I had and I had no place to go after I was hospitalized and that's how I ended up here. It made me realize that keeping homeless people at a remove is not just an act of cowardice in society at large, but also an expression of the protective layer the wealthier classes build around themselves to shield themselves from the gritty potential in life. See, I help everybody because I know how these things are. You know, it's hard times right here. Everybody's broke, so you know, they want to smoke a cigarette, have a mouth, food, whatever I can, you know. I share everything I can. 
Well, I think that there's a lot of people who are not willing to hire homeless people, not willing to give them a chance, but I do believe that there are still good people in America. The election had become a noise of clashing ideas and archetypes, a mirage of shock, fantasy and drama. I felt at last I had arrived at a more substantial reality, and it revealed itself in the simple way a human being suffers. I'm here in a lot of ways, but um, what brought me here was trying to find my, myself. Yes. You know, there's a lot of people just getting richer and richer and richer, while uh, more and more people from middle class below are just, are just going way, way down below the poverty line. Seen in this way, the measure of society became how it treated those who had fallen through its safety net. As such, I felt the Opportunity Center offered not just opportunity to those lives it was helping rebuild, but also to society itself. Making money, eating too much, drinking too much, doing some wrong things, you know. The human, they don't want to under, understand how to live better. How do we create a, an atmosphere that's friendly and safe and, and caring of the people that are rejected by uh, by the people in El Paso and everywhere else. You feel right. <laughs> Ozzy, put it back. Oh, crap. <laughs> The cowboy life is the only life. My dad was once, a, he was first, last, and always a cowman. The cattle industry is still going. They've had a lot of heartaches and heartbreaks, something to sell down your herd or sell it off and then start over again. And there's an old story about the guy, you know, some rancher who said, What would you have if you had, a, what would you do if you had a million dollars? I reckon I'd just stay in the cattle business till it's all gone. This little stove is what keeps my house warm all there. High integrity and hardworking and do the best you can. And as my nephew said when my dad passed on three years ago, he was 90 years old. And he was such an amazing man. And he always tried to make things better. The transformative effects of globalization on traditional ways of life is often presented in curiously statistical ways. The deeper I traveled into America, the more I witnessed longing for ways of life irrevocably changed through modernity. Within this yearning was a discernible pain, not just in the difficulty of rural life. It doesn't matter how hard it gets, you just keep pushing through, you push through, you push through. Perseverance, perseverance, doing the best you can, those are the things that I learned from my folks. But moreover, an acute sense of personal and human loss. In our, our town was booming. We had businesses that were everywhere. I love my town. I love, I, I love my town. I love it with all my heart. I hate to see it just going downhill every day something closes and somebody moves and you never see that one person again that you knew. That is so sad. In the last, what is it, three years, we've had, I don't know how many overdoses, heroin overdoses of young kids. It's almost like it's the devil's playground. Smoking the ball. <laughs> Chavo, one of the most beautiful places you've ever been. One of the most radical places. Back in the day, it was something else. I'm an Aborigine of this continent. Hello. I'm not even talked about when it comes to race. If I thought that Trump would be in there, I'd put a bullet in his head if I had the opportunity. 
they talk about all these other nationalities that came from everywhere as a minority. They never say American Indians. I don't trust the man. I think he's a Hitler. I wish I could ask the whole United States about this. Everybody, wherever they came from, is a descendant from somewhere else. I think he's the worst of all the worst. Yeah, these roads are really beginning to, to get uh, icy up here in the mountains, uh, heading towards Silverton. You know, this race is going down to the wire. You've got uh, Trump making this crazy late surge. Two weeks ago, his campaign was dead in the water, and suddenly the, the, uh, the head of the FBI released these emails, and Clinton's campaign has just been absolutely taken to pieces. Three days to the election, is it going to stabilize or is Trump's rampantness going to come back? Wow, it's really getting snowy. I really want to get to Silverton and find somewhere to stay because this isn't cool at all. To tell someone like myself, a small business owner, um, when, he, when he, he didn't pay taxes for all those years, you have to say, well, I didn't pay taxes because I'm smart. You know, and then there's someone like me that doesn't make that much money and has to pay a certain amount of taxes every year. I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's an insult to say something like that. In other parts of the country, there's tension between the political views. Have you found any of that in Silverton? Oh, there's lots of it. People are stealing signs. <laughs> they get in people's face and argue with them. It's pretty ugly. I think that there's a big section of America that um, thinks that America's going in the wrong direction because we're becoming more liberal on social issues and it scares them. People have ruined the country, and whether you agree with that or not, it's your opinion, but it's in trouble right now. And terrorist groups are growing way faster than they should be allowed to. We used to deal with that so that they wouldn't cause the world harm. And that's not happening anymore. And we hear there's some serious crime going on. Oh, big time. <laughs> there's a bad character who came to town. I'll hear it from six different people before the day's out. Big time crime in big this Big time in this area. <laughs> so is that how you uh, managed to come across me after five minutes of being in town? That's right. Someone said, I don't know, some cat with an accent. You better check them out. <laughs> <laughs> they come in that way or is they come in that way? We can make sure that we lock the town down. I'm glad I'm not getting arrested. <laughs> uh, not yet. I'd been lucky enough to be welcomed into the fold by Silverton's law enforcement community. Once again, I was struck by the apparent contradiction between America's internal divisions. The political period over the last couple of years has been knock down, drag out politics here lately. They're the ones that everybody, of course, looks up to or listens to or, or sees. And its consistent capacity to show welcome and hospitality to a stranger. Guys, you know, we don't understand the tea and strumpets thing or whatever you guys say. But We're showing the American spirit and uh, redneck trucks there. <laughs> I hope to find out more about small community life. When the shit hits the fan, we all come together and do what needs to get done. And the role of guns in America. This is a Kalishnikov. It says Kalishnikov this way, a little play on walk this way. So I'm glad to see people coming and caring enough to find out what America is like, not what the American government is like, what America is like. Well, I think, first of all, we kid ourselves to believe that we're in a true democracy anymore. We're in what I consider a system of legalized bribery. I mean, when you know, over 90% of every decision in the House and Senate is in direct proportion to the money they put that person in office, that's not democracy. That's bribery. Oh. Just some care about it from the heart rather than from the power structure. And our politicians are no different than politicians any place else. It's a power struggle. We're, we're ready for some major, major reforms that need to happen soon, and maybe such a circus-like election as this will kind of bring that about. But. Uh, most of us have, whether it's one side of the political spectrum or the other, all have the America the, at heart and want to make it what it, it's supposed to be. And so, anyway. <laughs> I'm oh, good, man. How are you? Man, good to see you. The British will always view the American addiction to guns with a degree of bemused curiosity and quizzical bafflement. So, Bruce, I hope that's not a Scottish guy you've got on the target over there. <laughs> Make my day, punk. That's the one. <laughs> I will point it at Steve's truck because I don't like Steve very much. You know? And yet, for better or worse, firearms are ingrained into the American consciousness. The right to own a gun is synonymous for many U.S. citizens with the notion of freedom itself.
regardless of my personal feelings about deadly weapons. I was impressed at the discipline and diligence of the Silverton Police Force. Here, you or anybody else, you will call me and I will do everything in my power at risk to, risk to myself to be there at your darkest hour. You going hot? You're all like, fucking hell, it's got a kick. <laughs> You look like Doc Holliday in that hat. Well, it's the day before the elections, nearly at Salt Lake City. Just start rolling, seeing some amazing countryside. It's so beautiful. This country just takes the breath away at every turn. Even at this moment when it's going so berserk, so crazy. You know what, this, this election became for me not about Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. It's become about the American people. It's become about these mavericks that I've come to know and learn and love. And I'm just hoping that, you know, there's a sense of uh, redemption and healing and coming together after this election because all the people I've met, every single one of them deserves it. Something is in the air and I just hope that it's a, a moment which can lead to great self-reflection and for like the true spirit of America to come through that, that I've come across in so much abundance on this journey. Come on America, inspire us all again like you only you can. Okay, it's election day. Let's go and see what's gonna happen. Who are you supporting today? You're wanting a female president. I'm who are you voting for? I have no idea and I won't know until I get in there. Oh, I'm just terrified. And think long and hard about who I hate the least. Well, how do you feel if you wake up and he's got the nuclear codes tomorrow? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because I think Trump has such an ego that he'll try really hard to do a good job. Um, you know, the reason why I'm deciding when I get there is because um, it's been impossible for me to pick a side, so to speak. You still undecided. Look, you're like you're two yards away from the polling booth, and you still don't know. Confusion, <laughs> anxiety. It's two capitalists running against each other who are both billionaires. Make Americanos great again. <laughs> they take it back to a better time, but they never tell you what time that is, and they never say what made it better back then. So the sun is going down over Salt Lake City soon, and when it comes up again, America will have. A new president. Clinton in the lead in Florida. Okay, the election is already seesawing from left to right. But Trump has a lead. I mean, it's just like so dramatic. And Clinton has gone ahead. It's, it's seesawing, it's seesawing. I mean, I'm not an American man, and I'm totally on a knife edge. You're looking quite good at the moment in Florida for Clinton. But no one knows where it's going. Trump is winning in Florida, but look at that. Clinton ahead in Texas. My youngest daughter is, uh, going to school at the University or Montana State University election night the party that she's putting together for her friends on her dorm is uh, is RIP American night rest in peace American night I'm calling, I'm calling this erection day we're screwed either way Hillary gets the flu and she can't be on election really I have a vagina and you know what I have kids to take care of and if you really can't hold it together with a vagina. I'm seriously, I'm a Buddhist. To the Trump supporters out there, what do you think? Find, do you think find the primary do? sources for yourself. Uh, discover your own path to knowledge. One thing will she do? If you had the chance to go back in time. Okay. And ask me. Um, end the life okay. of one Adolf Hitler. And? Would you do so? No. Why not? Why would it's you? an interesting line okay. of inquiry. Okay, okay, why would you? Because I believe that given a chance you? to oppose forces against humanity, I would do so for Hitler or for wait, Trump. Wait, wait, guess what? You What's weren't that? there and you can't change history. And it's unfortunate, oh, but oh. having visited the polls, I have done what I feel is but my American duty. But you can't change duty. history, son. And I hope that I can change history going forward tonight. Mm. I've tried my best to do so and we will mind see what you, the outcome is. Mind you, you did. You tried to change history. I'm proud of you for trying to make a change. And are you? Thank you. I didn't vote. I'm Buddhist. I don't need to change history. It'll happen with or without me. That's your choice. It is my choice. Have a good night. I am.
I'm having a blessed evening. Thank you. <laughs> I am. I so Ohio is shifting Republican as well at the moment. Right now. Changed so much. Trump is up across the board. Uh, Donald Trump will carry a huge prize. Texas. He's up in Florida. He's up in Ohio. He's up in North Carolina. Hillary's got it in the bag. Look how red it is. It's just yes. terrifying. We're working west. As soon as we get the west coast. <laughs> I'm so stressed out by your American bloody election that I've had to come and get some cigarettes. It's still fucking stressful. <laughs> what happened? The coast hasn't voted. The entire half of the, of, in theory, half of the liberal constituency has not voted. It's rigged. Virginia just won for Hillary Clinton. I feel good, a little nervous. Ohio has lost to Democrats. Ohio is gone. It is gone to Trump. How many electoral votes go to Ohio? I have no idea. <laughs> Me fucking neither. I'm disappointed that the American people are so racist oriented. If uh, Michigan and Wisconsin go to Trump, it's over. We just won California. California. But Trump won Idaho. Hillary just passed Donald Trump. If we lose Wisconsin, Michigan, it's over. <laughs> So I'm dashing across town and we do not know which way it is going. Trump has just won North Carolina, it's official. His message is connected with people. The world is changing. The world is changing. I'm nervous because Ohio is normally a good predictor and they totally failed us. If Trump wins, there will be a Republican House, Republican Senate, a Republican President who's likely to put in multiple Supreme Court justices. This is Roe v. Wade going away. But no, all of you were too high. Like, oh, dude, oh, we got a vote today. This is traditional marriage being reinstated likely. This is not just undoing what Obama did. This is undoing decades of stuff that we all care deeply about. That's what all of you did. And this is how, this is how all of you got to where you are now. This is a really, really shitty moment if this is going the way it looks like it's going to go. I think the polls are so close to, too close to call. Barring the miraculous, I think Trump is our president, which says a remarkable thing about democracy, which is that we get what we get and we have to acknowledge the reality of what our populace is and what it wants. We, we come together when it's uh, when we're at the hardest times, you know, evolution happens at the precipice. It's, it's like a nightmare. I'm here for the girls, that's me! All the beautiful things get tearing apart. Well, I just think I, I underestimated how misogynistic and xenophobic and terrible so much of America is. Have people putting children to bed tonight and they, they're afraid of breakfast. And I'm scared for all of my friends and anybody who's different. I have Muslim friends who are texting me tonight saying, should I leave the country? A presidency with someone who fears difference in all shapes and sizes. This was a white lash. It's nearly 11 o'clock. It hasn't been announced yet. But we don't want to feel that someone has been elected by throwing away some of us. The atmosphere has died in the, in the uh, Democratic Convention. A solid 21% chance. I just... It's not nothing. We're pretty much Germany in the 1940s right now. The parallels are uncanny. Hope dies last. He's loud. He says he can single-handedly fix the problems by eliminating minorities. He sounds like, you know, sorry, somebody. I think a Trump presidency will We're fucked because of Trump! and acceptance of diversity. I'm on my own in a cinema. It's meant to be a party for the president. Donald Trump about to take the stage. Depressed, buddy. We introduce to you the president-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Now it is all hitting me in the chest. Kind of like a bad porno. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated. I just received a call from Secretary Clinton. This, the victory of, of Trump is part of a global movement. There's no doubt there are shifting sands. The West 
is changing. And so some people might argue that there is a there is some type of positive because if so many people want change, then it has to happen. But what does that change mean when it is characterized by xenophobia, by division, by pointing fingers, by hostility, by anger, by racism? It's hard to see where it's going. People need to come together more. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the evil is taking over with a lot of things here in these days, you know. Yeah, I don't even know what town I'm in. The protests breaking out across the country. The rhetoric of his campaign can't be undone. I mean, look at history where this language leads to. I'm on the way up to Oakland tonight. There's been protests breaking out across the US. I'm just heading towards this protest to see what the feeling is here in California. We are going up against a corrupt adversary and we can't match his corruption. Because if we match his corruption, he will take us out easily. Hey Glenn, how are you feeling tonight? What we have to do is make sure that we're fighting against the corruption within ourselves while we're fighting against corruption in this society. To accept this is to accept a repeat of history. There will be no I never knew. The Republicans won the House, the Senate, the fucking Judicial Court. So the, the Republicans haven't won that much since 1928. Do your fucking history. We, I really do feel we have to come from love. The fuckers! You cannot fucking be non-violent to somebody who is violent towards you. Martin Luther King fucking find that out when he got his ass assassinated. We have to march. Strike. Like we never have. I mean, th this division has been going on since the entire history of this country. It's only now that there's such a mass uprising against it. We did kill 95% of the native people that lived here. Of like, what, 12 million? Fucking indigenous land, you fucking asshole! If we're not divided, we can unite against something like corporatism or the government, and that is truly dangerous. Death to the idea that love can solve racism. Death to the idea that love can solve capitalism. Death to the idea that love trumps hate. It's about resistance. It's about organized resistance. These corporations back every war that we see. Yes. They back everything that is corrupt. Yes. They don't back anything good. That's 50 shit fucking peaceful stuff. That shit is a fucking gun. We go home. Fucking 50 shit fucking peaceful. They're fucking arresting people. That's fucking violent. Them fucking taking out the jail is fucking violent. I believe that it's necessary to resist the rise of fascism in violent ways. Yeah. Can never be divided. Maybe in a in a state like Nazi Germany. I don't know, because how else would you have countered that? When he spoke against Mexicans, when he spoke against queer folks. I am a gay man, and I'm at a point where I can't really articulate the fears I have for this country. Fuck who? Fuck who? Fuck who? Fuck who? Because I'm a member of the LGBTQ community, and I feel a lot better going to sleep at night knowing that I have not like practiced, like if I say fuck Donald Trump, that's in for me very hateful. You know, we gotta it's do a... this together, man. There's no other way. You gotta eradicate this shit with love, all right? The original constitution mentioned slavery. And, and slavery, two thirds a person. A black man was two thirds a person, what? You can't expect a people who've been oppressed for so many fucking centuries to just be peaceful up until now. Like, do you think we just gonna be holding hands and marching and singing all the fucking time? That bitch is a dump! Fuck that nigga Trump! The next thing is, is to stand up and fight for everything that this country is for. And I want you to remember that we got four long years of opposing this motherfucker! They didn't allow women to vote. Last night I got tear gas. The Constitution needs to evolve. We don't want no special treatment. We want what the Constitution says that we deserve, but what we know is the Constitution wasn't written as to give them what we deserve. Peaceful protest! And they won't stand there like some little fucking bitches with some firearms and shit. 
But no, they won't do it alone. Fuck that. And you look at history, and you look at when Mussolini and Hitler were elected, and you say, how did the whole world sit there and watch this happen? And it's a fucking shame that he got elected into office, and it's a fucking disgrace and a slap in the face of every American out here. We, we always, like, talk about love, and but if we keep doing all these violent, so-called violent pro protests, that's not love. Yeah, we, I, we, we, we talk about love so much, but in all our protests, like, that's not love. First they came for the Jews, and then they came for this, and then they came for that, and I was quiet. And then they came for me, but there was nobody left to stand up. And I believe that Donald Trump's presidency is the rise of fascism in the United States. If we look at history, and we look at the rise of fascism in the 30s, everything that happened then is happening now. So no, I want to see Swiss cheese buildings that, that these rich people own and what? let them send a message to them. What is a that Swiss cheese building? A Swiss cheese building, a, a buildings that's been bombed, that's, that's been shot through and you so got you holes. So you want to see this stuff getting torn down? Why not? It makes me very afraid. It makes me afraid. For the people I love, who I know best. But it makes me very afraid for the people I don't know, who are my family because I'm of the family human. I have reached the Pacific Ocean. I reflect on my broken half moon through America's cities, valleys, dirt roads, outhouses, motels, homeless shelters, rodeos, swamps and highways. My heart is pregnant with its colors, its kindness, its faces, its mesmeric beauty. My mind races wearily, consumed with its madness, its contradictions, paradoxes and parallels. I'm anxious, worried that in juxtaposing so many voices with one another, if I've done injustice to the poetry of each individual I've met. Did I lessen their voices by being too open to life in all its vastness? Should I have set more limiting parameters, tried to explore one issue rather than grapple with its totality? And yet, as I look out over the Pacific, my heart gives in to the contraction and dilation of the ocean, its ineffability, its raw, violent power, and its capacity for glacial stillness. This ocean is America, and it is too vast to consume, too multiplex to comprehend. It's only in giving into it, into accepting its nature, that I can be one with it. It's a broken quilt, a violent patchwork, but it is this very fragmentation that makes me love it so intensely. My political road movie, shot on a shoestring budget, is at its end. Everything's got too much for me Oh, I would love John the Free the, the presidency, the incoming administration is kind of like a, it's like a hurricane just offshore that's about to make landfall. America is more conflicted than ever, its past evanescent, its future uncertain. I've been for a short time a part of its dream, and in doing so, have witnessed its nightmares. There is an idea that is America, and yet it forever wrestles with what that idea is. Yet nonetheless, its history remains in its own hands. It is democracy itself which is celebrated in the manifold voices I've heard. And it's those same voices which will protect that democracy, even as it is challenged and threatened in ways it could never have imagined. America remains the emblem of our longing and our dreaming. My conversation with it has been one of the great experiences of my life, and now, I give back the gift it gave to me. I am hopeful that it might in it remember its own beauty and recognize that its diversity and abundance drives its special energy. Most of all, I hope it will renew its conversation with itself. 
not just with a lighter tone, but a willingness, once again, to listen. Welcome to your first morning in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't feel insulted either when I kept going, oh, bullshit. <laughs> well, he was like, that's a cool dude. I like small government. <laughs> I just want to wear t-shirts that say the Beatles on them and seem cool. This is not, this lame. Is not going in a documentary. I'm not editing set against the Beatles. Last question, how much are we getting paid? Oh, I, 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 I wish I was getting paid. <laughs> and I get nights like tonight. So like, you get some random Scottish. He does some random Scottish blur that just comes and gets. This is really good. It does the job, man. I tell you. Guaranteed to withstand 200 mile an hour winds. You're in luck. I'm not afraid of Trump. He's too fucking stupid to fuck things up that badly. They cheated, Jim. You motherfucker. Just have a good night. God bless. You too. Yes, I still choose love.